This Lancet series on ending preventable stillbirths tells us that there is a huge number, 2.6 million stillbirths happening in the last three months of pregnancy every year. My name is Professor Joy Lorne. I'm from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. I was once a neonatologist. I'm now a perinatal epidemiologist. So when a, a woman or a, a, a family come home and they don't have the baby, you know, they have made preparations, but there's no baby there. Even their own family members don't know what to say to them. Once the baby comes out, we're great at attaching lots of machines to this baby, spending a lot on, you know, really pushing the boundaries of survival. So a baby born in silence as a stillbirth is associated with a woman often grieving in silence and families who aren't able to discuss this openly doesn't get it onto the global agenda. But it also tells us through the science that those stillbirths are largely preventable. The myth that stillbirths are inevitable, that it's the woman's fault, that there should be stigma and taboo blaming her is not correct. And that myth is held not just by society but also often by professionals and by scientists. Stillbirth was just meant to be. So the things that we can do for preventing stillbirths, first of all, the quality of care at birth. 50% of stillbirths happen during labour. The woman goes through nine months of pregnancy, she goes into labour with a live baby, and while she is in labour, because of the management of that process, the baby dies. Secondly, the quality of antenatal care. The second biggest group of preventable stillbirths is around infections during pregnancy, particularly syphilis and malaria. We have had uh, treatment for syphilis, penicillin injections for decades. As well as being one of the world's biggest uncounted and invisible issues, not tracked by the United Nations, not included in the global burden of disease, this is a condition that is disproportionately high in high income countries as well as in the poorest countries of the world. So the number of babies who are dying as stillbirths is similar to the number of children who are dying in the whole of the first year of life. The rates and the numbers within high income countries are disproportionately high and moving too slowly. The majority are happening 75% in Africa and Asia. Uh, about two thirds of those are happening in rural areas. Within rich countries, it's double the risk for the poorest. So it's very much the people who have the, the least voice. The return on investment uh, in low income countries is considerable, at least a, 10, a ratio of cost benefit of 10. But if we look at middle income countries, it's 25. This is a huge return on investment. So who do we need to make a difference? I would say, first of all, we need parent groups to take leadership and demand change on this. It's obstetricians and midwives who are really looking at implementing quality of care. But we also need the global community to take a leadership role on this. Health ministers in every country of the world should be judged on the stillbirth rate of intrapartum stillbirths. If you still have a high rate of intrapartum stillbirths in your country, your health system is not delivering what it needs to deliver for women and for children.